Today's video is sponsored by Epic Games. Chapter 4 of Fortnite is here and you need to dive in and play. Be sure to hit the link in the description to download Fortnite. Season 4 is bigger and it has better biomes and POIs. The new map is 30 to 40% smaller so that means fast paced action when you're playing the BR. Using Unreal Engine 5, Epic Games has given Fortnite a graphical overhaul. Like genuinely. I loaded into Fortnite and I could not believe how beautiful everything was. Mobility is always super important to me when I'm playing the BR and they have new mobility in the game. And those are dirt bikes and sprint vaulting. There's also new core weapons that will replace the current weapon meta. You got the blade firing Excalibur rifle, the intense thunder shotgun, and the red eye assault rifle. They also added reality augments. It's a new system in the BR that periodically presents players with random choices to select augments for the remainder of the match. You know who else is joining in on the fun? Mr. Beast, December 14th, Mr. Beast got his own skin in the Fortnite item shop. So don't miss out on chapter four of Fortnite. Shout out to Epic Games for sponsoring this video, and I can't wait to drop in with y'all. What's the word, y'all? The Knicks are on a five game win streak, and the Nets are on a five game win streak. Basketball in the state of New York. Oh, it's, it's looking good, y'all. And this is why I love the NBA, because everything is so very fluid. A couple weeks ago, Knicks fans were calling for the head of Tom Thibodeau. He was on the hot seat. Julius Randle was getting crucified by the fans. RJ Barrett, oh my God, we gave him the money and he can't shoot and he can't play make and he can't really defend anymore. What's going on? And just like that, they're back in the swing of things. And they're a half game away from a top four seed in the Easter Conference. This is why we do this, man. They were in the gutter and they switched it up. Now we asking, how the hell they do it? This is the happiest the Knicks fans have been since the year that they did the thing. Since the year of, of Julius Randle making an All-NBA team. Because last year, of course, a big disappointment. And in the first couple weeks, or oh, first month and a half of this season, big disappointment. But things have been changing. And you know what? I got to give some more credit to Tom Thibodeau. Listen, I was a fan of a team that was coached by Tom Thibodeau. He has been throughout the entirety of his career, whether it been in Chicago, whether it been in Minnesota, or his time with the Knicks. He is a stubborn coach stubborn to a fault in a lot of cases we were playing a lot of evan 48 they were playing a lot of people that don't really provide production the way you want to and then he decided you know what evan i know we gave you this contract a couple years ago and though you're still a good shooter you're not giving us nothing on the defensive side of the ball so we're gonna replace you with q grimes i was at summer league this season and quentin grimes looked like one of the top three players in all of summer league and pierre who's my cousin Knicks fan said next to me he said oh yeah this is q grimes this year this is his year that he's gonna get into the rotation he's gonna take a starting spot and then early in the season q grimes is getting like dmps and Knicks fans like oh my god for for evan fournier We'd, we'd rather be bad because they were already bad at the moment and just let the young dude play. At least he can develop. And eventually, it got to the point now where he is lighting it up. But we knew he can score. That, I mean, he did that at Houston. He did that in the summer league. I've been impressed with his defense over the last couple weeks. And let me get this out of the way while we're here. Do not tweet at me if your favorite team beat the Bulls. We're bad. It is not an accomplishment to beat a bad team, okay? Shout out to the Knicks. But Knicks fans, is all of my mentors, how you feel right now? You must be upset. I'm not upset. I gave up on a season a while ago. <laughs> we get a Wimby, you feel me? Um, but no, I've been really, really impressed with the defense from not just Quentin Grimes, but from the team collectively. In their last seven games, they're 6-1. and one, and The only loss is that one we were talking about where they gave up 41 points to the Dallas Mavericks in that, that third quarter. They have the second best defense in basketball in that time frame. This team is defending like the Julius Randle All-NBA year, but better right now. And that is a little bit scary. Because let's be honest, you look at the weapons on that team with Julius Randle, uh, Jalen Brunson, RJ Barrett. They're never going to be a team that's going to be looked at as an offensive juggernaut. They probably won't with this core be a top 10 offense. But on the defensive side of the ball, if you could continue this and be a top 10 defense and you still be an average offensive team, because that's where they are right now, an average offensive team, this is a recipe to be a good team. And right now, they have been playing like a really good team. RJ is alive. During this win streak, RJ is averaging about 20 points per game, 43% from the field, about 39% from three on five and a half attempts. That's that's pretty good for RJ Bear, especially when compared to the first part of the season where he was still giving you about 19 points per game, but the shooting splits were bad. And the defense is looking good, obviously, as the, as the team continues to do it. But the body language from, from Julius Randle 
tells you a lot about what the hell is going on with the New York Knicks. When he was in his all NBA season, hey, the body language was A1, no complaints. Last season, it was in the tank where he's giving a thumbs down to the home team after he had a clutch shot because they he was so upset that they were so upset with his production and everything. And right now, um, he's playing some of his best basketball in his career. And when you do that, obviously, you're going to be happy. You're going to be locked in more defensively. I saw him switch up to Zach Levine so much in the last couple days and hold his own. That's the type of person Julius Randle can be. But through the first couple weeks of the season, they weren't even switching Julius Randle onto the other guards or forwards in the league because he weren't really engaged. And recently, they've been allowing him to do that. So Thibs decided to bench Evan Fournier, bench Derrick Rose, who played today you know, at the UC, which is, which is fun. Um, and then bench Cam Reddish, who's a young dude that should be getting minutes because people think he's going to be good. But, I mean, if you couldn't get minutes on the Knicks when they were struggling. At the end of the day, it seems like what Tom Thibodeau is doing right now is allowing the players that play hard to play. I mean, Miles McBride took the spot of Derrick Rose. And part of that is because he's a hard-nosed, on-ball defender. He's going to hound you. Him and Quentin Grimes, when they're on the court together, if I am a, a, a guard... I'm like, oh, come on, man, because you're not going to get anything easy. And that's what they're doing. They're not allowing their opponents to take any threes. And when they do take them, they're never wide open. I think they have like a 20% open rate in the last two weeks or so. So they're closing people out from getting open looks. And it's been amazing. So shout out to the Knicks, man. If they can keep this up, this team could be uh, really solid and secure themselves a playoff spot, which at this moment, that, that should be the goal. Um, Even though... I, I'm going to say this about any team that have a plethora of first-round picks, and the Knicks are one of those teams that have a plethora of first-round picks. I, you, you don't really know. You know, Julius Randle's in a lot of trade talks, and I don't know if that was specifically from the fans or something that's buzzing around the league, but it felt like Julius Randle might have been on the chopping block a little bit, and now he's playing good basketball again, so I don't know what happens then. Um, but this could be a team that buys at this deadline. They could buy. Because, it, you know what, even though they've been playing well, they're, they're still playing uh, a lot of their guys heavy minutes because it's a Tom, Tom Thibodeau way. You want to alleviate some of that pressure because you just it's just a smart thing to do in the long term of an NBA season. So shout out to the Knicks, man. Big wins. Five game streak. It's getting good. Now let's go across the bridge to hit up the Brooklyn Nets, who are also on a five game win streak after a game winning shot from Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving hit the biggest shot, but I'm a bigger fan of the shot before that. And I think Kyrie Irving might have created that shot too. So shout out to Reed for, for creating and hitting the biggest shots of the game. But you did the shooter. I saw a TikTok from the Brooklyn Nets. Shout out to the Brooklyn Nets, by the way. I, I worked with them a couple weeks ago and they finally posted it on socials the other day beautiful they gave me a polaroid cam camera and let me sit course side and i was snapping pictures and i had never been behind the camera before i usually do this type of stuff i had a lot of fun taking pictures of kevin durant and Kyrie irving I, they gave me 27 pictures 27 snaps i think 22 of them were were, were of Kyrie irving and kevin durant i mean they, they were the ones doing the cool stuff you know <laughs> you know what i'm saying um so shout out to the brooklyn nets for just being very cool and allowing me to experience the barclay center like that you did a shooter that that was where i was going i saw a tiktok uh, a, a couple days ago where Yuta was asked, where's your favorite place to play outside of home? You know what he said? Toronto. And boom, he had one of his best games of the season right there against his former team, the Toronto Raptors. Um, it was just, it was a good performance all around. We'll probably make a Toronto Raptors video eventually. Actually, people on Twitter is like, Kenny, come on, go, go ahead, get, give us the work, talk about us. But I'd rather highlight the good things going on around the league instead of the bad things, even though the Toronto Raptors have been one of my most disappointed teams this year. But they were without OG again and no Gary Trent Jr. Soft pass, everybody's banged up. Soft pass, though. It's so crazy what a different voice in a locker room can do to a team. There's nothing different about this team right now as far as on paper when Steve Nash was the coach and now... Uh, JV Jacques Vaughn, who's what they call him. And after this game, um, I think it was Kevin Durant. I'll be watching all the post game interviews and I get a mix. I think it might have been Kevin Durant that was saying, We're giving a lot of credit to JV for changing the mindset of all of our players here. They're locked in on both sides of the floor. And let's, let's be real. I know people are not talking about Kevin Durant as an MVP candidate because the Brooklyn Nets are 18 and 12. And a lot of the people that are above him in the MVP standings are also above him in the team success standings. Kevin Durant is an MVP candidate very, very easily. He won't get a, he won't get a lot of buzz. I don't think he'll get a lot of buzz. Even if they continue this streak, I don't know if Kevin Durant will get the buzz. But, bro, it, every single night it just feels like he cannot miss. The efficiency is, is ridiculous. And it's, it's still true. The man is shooting nearly 60%, 60% on mid-range jump shots this season on almost 350 attempts. Do you hear that? If it wasn't for his three-point shooting only being 35%, 
this this would be his most efficient season of his career and it's it's damn near his most he's most efficient season of his career when it comes to effective field goal percentage a lot of people don't like effective field goal percentage i understand at 61 percent that was a few years ago his first year in brooklyn right now he's at 60.2 so even though he's not shooting the three ball well for his standards he still is having the second most efficient season of his career and it's by one percentage point this man kevin deserves to be here and defensively, I mean, we've talked about basically in his time once he were with the Golden State Warriors out, Kevin Durant has turned into, he was never a bad defender, but turned himself into a more than just an average to slightly plus defender. He's playing some of his best defense of his career right now, y'all. He should be in the conversations for most valuable player. And I remember, um, it, it, like, this was right after he requested that um, Steve Nash got fired. I was listening to a bunch of podcasts and they were saying even if Kevin Durant had the best season of his career, I don't think that what he did with his front office and requesting the trade that the voters would give him the respect enough to give him the vote for MVP. And I say that's BS because if he is the MVP and he's playing like the MVP, he deserves those votes. But let me actually let me go look at the MVP ladder and see where he's at because last time I checked, he wasn't even on it. He's fifth. I came. I cannot be mad at fifth. Because that means he is at least in the conversations right now. And there's a world where he can he can get there. Come on, 30 points per game, almost seven assists, five and a half. I mean seven rebounds, five and a half assists. That's ridiculous. Anyway, they're playing more cohesively, if that's that's even a word. I'm still trying to figure out where I rank them in the hierarchy of the NBA. Um well, let's say hierarchy of the Eastern Conference, because right now I have um, the Boston Celtics lost to Orlando today. Shout out to Orlando. Another team on a five-game win streak after being the worst team in basketball before the streak. They're on a five-game, and he's be the best team in the league. Um, so I still have the Boston Celtics and the Milwaukee Bucks 1-2. But do I is the Brooklyn Nets closer to being the first team on the second tier, or are they closer to being on the, on the third team on the first tier, if that makes sense? I don't really know just yet. I think this week they go against... Let me, let, actually, let me look at their schedule because I know for sure they go against Milwaukee this week. So they go against the Warriors and then Milwaukee and then Cleveland. Um, those three games could be interesting, but, you know, Steph Curry is out. So maybe that won't be less interesting. But seeing Boston and Cleveland and then Atl Atlanta still with a bunch of injuries. So they got two games this next week um, that are big games, in my opinion, to help me determine where the hell do I rank them. But deeper than whether or not they're a contender right now they're an extremely fun watch the people on the bench are excited everybody except for cam thomas because he doesn't smile is excited they're winning games Kyrie is still a monster and then kevin Durant, like i mentioned mvp candidate so the vibes are back good in brooklyn after whoa what a crazy last three months for them four months between kevin and question the trade kevin giving them ultimatum Kyrie Irving's controversies to now the last couple months have been ridiculous and right now for the first time they just went two weeks of strictly basketball without nothing else happening <laughs> whoa even though uh, James Harden did say something about his time in Brooklyn but they ain't got nothing to do with that they ain't got nothing to do with that that's the James Harden thing so um shout out to them New York basketball is looking good let's take a look around the league and, and some other stuff that happened little rapid fire trey young shout out to trigger trey i can't give him trigger trey because i gave trey murphy trigger trey Mur ice cold trey young um had his first what felt like super dominant game i know he's had times this season where the counter stats look good but the shooting was so off today a for 18 two for five from three 31 points he got to the free throw line like a madman also ended up with uh nine assists i always say if you need to get out of the slump go get charlotte go get charlotte lamello's been looking good since he come back he had seven i didn't realize he had seven threes today um if you <laughs> if you need to get out of the slump go get charlotte that usually help so shout out to him because they they desperately needed a win after the last couple weeks or so with all of the injuries we just found out the click appell is gonna be off for a couple weeks so it's just been weird weirdness injuries all of that but trey young was him tonight the Kings beat the Pistons. Okay, I must say that. They're the superior team. That's a that should be a win. The Mo Wagner game. 25 and 8 for Mo Wagner against the Boston Celtics. I, I've always said that I really enjoyed the magic when when they're in games. Like there are times, of course, they get blown out and I turn the game off. But as long as their game is close, they're fun to watch. Because Palo's a grown man, Franz, and I guess Mo now <laughs> are really good players. And they I, I didn't watch this one specifically, but there you go. Kevon Looney was an assist away from a triple double. I didn't watch that game, so I didn't know that. That's crazy. Nas Reed, 28, 9, and 3 steals. Okay, so these are games I didn't watch. And then Luca was Luca. 
um, against. No, 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 no. This wasn't a Luka game. Shout out to Luka. I can't. That's so crazy. Luka's at the point where I see a stat line of 33, 9 assists, and 6 rebounds. And I'm like, eh, this game is about Christian Wood because he was giving Yusuf Nurkic the hands tonight. And, and the feet, the, the post up, the jump shot. He was giving everything he wanted. He's getting everything he's wanted. Um, so shout out to him. Um, as you could probably imagine, I didn't get to watch a lot of basketball today. That's why my recaps of the last couple of games ain't been much. Um, because today was my anniversary. Me and my fiance have been together for nine years. Nine years. It's crazy. Um, so we went out to dinner and stuff, so I missed a ton of these games. But what I will do tomorrow is watch the stuff I missed, because that's what we do. We never behind the day. Uh, so I'll see y'all tomorrow.